So let's start with this typical example. Term 2 is equal to negative 20 and term 5 is equal to negative 160. And they are two terms of a geometric sequence. Determine, okay, first we, they ask us to determine the first term and the constant ratio. If, and they tell us the constant ratio is positive, cool. Uh, term, uh, question 2, uh, calculate or determine term 8. And then uh, question 3, which term is equal to negative 40? Which term is equal to negative 40? Okay, so let's start with the first question to determine the first term and the constant ratio. Okay, so they're asking for the first term, which is A. And again, when you see geometric sequence, the first thing that should go off in your head is the general term, A, R, N minus 1. That just reminds us again, what are all the variables or actually parameters that we need to find. Uh, and the first one reminds, or actually tells us, find, find the first term and find the constant ratio, which is R. And they just give an extra condition, R must be positive. So we'll just make sure that we find a positive R. Okay. How are we going to do that? We have two unknowns, which means we need two equations. And here we have where the two equations are going to come from. So first of all, we start with the general term. We know that since we are working with a geometric sequence, this is our general term. And from that general term, we get two equations. The one for equation for uh, term two, I mean. So for term two, we have that a r and that means n is now equal to 2 so 2 minus 1 a r to the power of 1 I don't need to write it is equal to negative 20 okay and the second one is that uh, term 5 okay term 5 is equal to negative 160 so if I take term 5 is equal to a r 5 minus 1 gives me 4 is equal to negative 160 which is all cool okay now I've got two equations equation 1 and equation 2 and I can just solve them simultaneously now here is a little trick okay an easy way to always solve a geometric sequence uh, equations simultaneously is if I just take term 2 or uh, equation 2 I mean and divide it with equation 1 so look what's going to happen on this side if I take a r 4 divided by by a r on the left hand side on the right hand side I've got 160 negative divided by negative 20 and immediately again we immediately get rid of the a term or the a uh, parameter which means that r to the power of 3 equals 8 now you can see that if this was r squared we would have had two values so I might have had something like r squared is equal to 4 and then r could have been equal to negative 2 or r could have been equal to positive 2 in this case we would have to have one of them being correct and that's where that extra condition came in this extra condition right here um, in this case r to the power of 3 is equal to 8 now there's only one solution to this and that is the number 2 okay negative 2 doesn't work because negative 2 cubed gives me negative 8 so there's only one value that this can be and that is 2 and then I just use equation 1 to find r so uh, sorry to find a a times 2 is equal to negative 20 and a is very easily solved because we know that a must be negative 10 so that when I double it or multiply it with 2 I get negative 20 and there I go I found my constant ratio and my first term well done now they ask me for term 8 Again, quite easy. All I do is I just use my uh, general term now. Okay, my general term being a, which is negative uh, 10, times r, which is 2, to the power of n minus 1, which is 8 minus 1. Substitute everything into that general term. Now I find um, 8 minus 1 is 7. 2 to the power of 7 is 128 
times negative 10 is negative 1 to 128 worth an extra 0. I multiply with a 10, I can just add a 0 at the end. And there we go. That would be the 8th term, negative 110. Now they ask me which term is equal to 40. So term, who knows, is equal to negative 40. Okay. Maybe you can suspect it's 3. You can maybe, if you want to, suspect it's 3. Um, but let's just confirm. So we know that negative 10 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 must equal 4. Negative 40. Okay. So what is this n? Well, all we need to do is solve it. Divide both sides with the negative 10 first. You can see my unknown is in the exponent, and you'll recall that when my unknown is in the exponent, I must solve my power. So I'm trying to get a base and an exponent on its own, and then maybe use logs if it's going to be too difficult to do in my head. Okay, But it cancels on this side. On the other side, I get negative 40 divided by negative 10 gives me uh, 4. So I've got 2 to the power n minus 1 is equal to to 4. Now this is not too difficult. We can figure this out. 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. So whatever in is here in the uh, exponent, that must equal 2. So n minus 1 must equal 2, which means the only way that is possible is if n is equal to 3. In other words, term 3 is equal to negative 40. Cool.